I'll just flip that spring out of the way because it's an obstruction where it is at the moment. Yeah, let's get that pulleys free. Now this one, which is our longer of the two tails that we've got coming off our meter, I know goes to the back pulley. And this one, the shorter one, goes to the front pulley. Okay, so I'm clear about that. There's no screw fitting on that arm here on a Retina Reflex S, unlike the Reflex 3. So the cord is not so convenient to uh, run. I'm just going to run some synthetic grease through our cord drum. I'll take this one here, which is our this one here, which is our front pulley. I'll start the knot in one of the grooves. I'll roll that between finger and thumb, and that cord goes to the bottom of the pulley. The other cord, the one from the back position. I start that in the opposite slot and roll that around the drum. This cord has to come up at the top of the pulley and getting this all to run nicely is one of life's trials. Okay. I'm just checking I've got that right. That the cord is on the drum. I'm not sure it's running smoothly yet, but ran from the front pulley. It's not sitting correctly there. It needs to it's sitting on the same pulley as the other one. Let's get that. That's correct. I'm going to take this top cover off so I want access to that screw and remove my washers and screw. Because of course I can't uh, move anything while they're in place. And I'm looking at my cord run to make sure that it's all correctly over the position, over the pulleys, that it's all running parallel, that there's nothing tangled up. That looks good. And I'll put my top cover on here. And that screw down. This is a somewhat butchered top cover, as you can see. I use this when I'm working on a reflect our Retina 3S as well. It works well for doing that particular job. Okay, so that just stops my meter from falling out, stops my shutter release from falling out. Everything's correctly positioned. So I'm looking at my cord run here now. And I just want to make sure that that cord will move smoothly and that the meter will move smoothly. Just take a toothpick, I'm just sort of pushing my cord where the knots are to either end of the uh, drum so that the cord will run round smoothly. I don't want it overlapping if I can avoid it. I 
and my cord position for the front one here that I really would like that that knot up closer to the front of the pulley if I could get it. I've got a lot of tension on this even though I've got no spring tension here yet so I know that that's uh, there's certainly no problem with tension on that cord the spring will be largely superfluous Of course, I'm very reliant on that this that this is correctly positioned. That this is where it began its life. If this was wrong last time somebody had been in here servicing the camera, if it was connected wrong, it would be connected wrong at the top there. And then when I put this back to correct position, that would be incorrect. But hopefully that's it. Hopefully that's good. Normally, of course, I'm removing the cord completely. And if you're removing the cord completely, then you can do all the alignment. You get this spring in position. Careful not to cut the cord as I swing that spring across. that. It's quite tight. But otherwise it all appears to be good. I'm just going to take the top off and have a close look and make sure that everything is moving smoothly. The cord's not doubled up on one pulley or anything odd like that. If you accidentally get the cord running on the same pulley as its mate, you end up with a lot of friction. I'm just checking there's no twists or turns. No, it all looks good. Okay, well we'll call that it correct. And uh, I can put those two little pieces of felt around here back in place, I suppose. They were there to keep dust out more than anything else. They're a bit superfluous. They're certainly not a light baffle. Looking to see... See, that's got a nasty bit of glue on the bottom. Someone's already had that off. This one has simply just come adrift because there's nothing on it to speak of. That one there doesn't look good. Let me have a close look at that. Right, so they just sat in there like that. So I'll put them back with a little spot of adhesive. I need the little clamp, the bracket to hold my spring tensioned. And this is just a little bracket that I've made some years ago. Basically, it's just a bracket with a notch in it to engage the spring and uh, 
so I can keep the spring tensioned on that front. front pinion. So it's just held in there, got a very short screw on it so it doesn't stick through too far and foul the shaft. I need to get that in place now. I'll put the top cover back on my truncated top cover so that I can operate the camera. while I'm fitting everything in place. Okay, that's all good. Yeah, is couple of tasks I'll need to do before I'm ready to put the front back on this camera. One is to put the shaft back in position and the front pinion and tension up the spring on the front pinion. And the other thing I'll need to do of course is place my washers and since I'm not ready to do that just at the moment we'll just leave this camera exactly as it is, pop the body to one side and deal with the other the other major component which is the front of the camera with the shutter assembly on it. I don't remember whether I'd already tested this and determined that it was sticky or not. We'll just crock this It works fairly well, which is interesting because I don't think it worked fairly well earlier. Anyway, this needs to be stripped and serviced. So, starting from the back. Well, this shutter release on the front of the, the housing here, I'll have that off. Now, there's a spring under there, you'll be careful not to lose it. And that spring is, is very, very ugly. Someone's done something to that and it wasn't good. I have to find a better example of a spring to go in that position. That one is completely distorted and given the shape of it, it probably doesn't move smoothly. I don't know what to make of that. Right, the rest of it. Well, here we've got a, a buffer. This is the buffer that the mirror comes up against. And that's just glued on there very lightly. I'll remove that. Two screws hold this plate in place. The washer from underneath that plate. Lift the plate off. There's the other washer. The other one came from down there. There's the plate. It acts as a guide for this rack. Stops that rack getting away. And in the centre it's the guide bush for this little pinion here. That's the cocking pinion that actually cocks the shutter. Now if I look at this one, I haven't disturbed every, anything yet. Tooth at the top of this wheel here goes into the first notch of the rack. The tooth at the bottom here goes to the fifth tooth, fifth notch of the rack. That's as I would expect it to be, so we can have that off. That pinion we can have off. I need to desolder this wire here. I can tell this has been serviced before because the soldering is a little bit ugly looking. I'll just go and uh, deal to that. Alright, with that wire desoldered, 
just looking at the twitch on that, I wondered whether it was disconnected at this end. Oh, it looks like it's alright. Okay, this screw is usually quite tight. It needs to be. It's very tight. Get a bigger screwdriver. Okay, that's loose. It's a shoulder screw. This arm may or may not lift out easily. Frequently you need to remove the screw from from this bracket so that bracket can shift out the way a bit. Little plastic button on here, an insulating button, you can make sure that's not loose. If it's loose, a little touch of glue or lacquer on the back of it will hold it in place just to make sure it doesn't snap off and cause you grief. Okay, so from here we can take out this gear set. Now I can tell that's been put in the wrong way. One side of this is relieved, the other side's dead flat. The dead flat side should have been back towards the casting. Single screw here. There's a little tension plate there. There's a pinion. It's got a tiny washer on that. Little, little shim washer. Can you see that? No, you can see nothing. Where am I? Oh, well off the camera. There it is. There's the pinion. There's a tiny shim washer. that sat on top of the pinion. Zoom you in a bit. Let's get this camera where it's pointing somewhere more useful. That's probably better. Yeah, this is the piece that opens the blades for viewing. And there's another little shim washer underneath here, which I want to recover because otherwise I'll end up dropping it and then it'll be gone. Right. There are four screws that hold the shutter assembly to the front panel. Two of them down in holes in the panel here. Two of them at the top here. recover those. It's not uncommon for the heads on these to be somewhat distorted. You're better to have the two that are down in the deep holes, you're better to have the best screws down there because it's hard to see what you're doing and the ones that aren't so good at the top where it's easier to see what you're about when you put them back. So the shutter should lift off here now and it's not in a hurry. Okay, I see why. Someone had put a bit of extra heat shrink on here and the flash contact was not coming out through the body. Here we go. So that's what was holding us up. I'll have to put a bit of heat shrink on there too, but I'll do a neater job than they did. Normally there would have been some plastic insulator left on here that was not tight through the caster. This was all carefully hidden underneath the uh, insulator washer where it couldn't be seen. In fact that's quite thick walled that tube so that's not really heat shrink as we know it. It was just another piece of uh, 
plastic insulation. So what's on here that we need to do? Well we need to clean all these surfaces. There's a bit of dust and rubbish around here. Make sure that the wheels here, the setting wheel for the aperture and meter, that, run, that runs smoothly. That all looks good. It's something stuck in here. Now that's where that's, yeah, it's a bit of something sticky in there. And that would not have been helping that spring. Something sticky's got in there. It may be that the casting's porous and that's glue that's come through from the uh, the front when the leatherettes have been put on. There's certainly something in there. There's a, a defect in the casting. I'm going to have to have a go at that with some solvent and clean that out and find out exactly what's going on there. No, it doesn't look like it goes all the way through, but there's certainly a, a mark or an indentation there, and there was something sticky in it. It's like a little piece of adhesive that had come from somewhere and fallen in there, and that's what would have meant caused that spring to get all mutilated, because almost certainly it didn't want... Yeah, I can see a piece of glue on there. So almost certainly that was stuck in the hole, and when the pressure went on the top, it meant that that thing wasn't free to, co to compress normally. And uh, that's what's caused it to go bad. Okay, so we should have a smoother shutter operation once we're all back together. Because of that particular fault. I can tell the casting here has been cut out slightly. That hole's bigger than usual, and that's almost certainly to accommodate that thick piece of insulation that they poked through. Alright. Anyway, that's the front panel. What I'm concerned with really is the shutter. Now there's three screws hold the shutter to this front lens mount section. I'm just going to move my settings lever here around slightly so that I've got access to the screw head easily. There's a post on here, which is not present on most reflex S's. And it's stopping this from sitting flat on the uh, table. So I'll remove these three nickel plated screws. There were no fights there, that went smoothly. Lift off the shutter assembly. Here's our shutter assembly. Nothing exciting to see here, it all looks complete. Certainly could uh, benefit from being serviced. Here's the lens mount section. Pieces not to lose here are the ball. That's the detent for our shutter speeds. This pinion, this couples the shutter cocking action to the uh, front rings for opening the, the aperture settings. That's what opens the diaphragm to full aperture for viewing. And this front plate it is just the trim plate at the front really keeps all the dust and dirt out of the camera. We just want that to, to remain nice and clean and scratch free so that when you have got the lens off the camera it doesn't look as ugly as sin. Here I can see old grease, a um, bit of dust and dirt, all of that stuff will need to go. That would have made the front rings quite stiff to move. Of course we haven't taken apart the front rings yet, they'll be, that's another task to do and they're certainly going to need it. So where to start, with the shutter or with the front? Oh, let's start with the shutter. 
we'll take this all apart I'll unclip the front retaining ring that's just a spring that holds in spring clip that holds that in place here's the uh, shutter speed settings cam plate Take out this pinion, take out this curved rack, and we'll take out this latch. That latch holds the shutter in the cock position, without that nothing works. I'm looking at this because the last loop of that spring is quite open. I'm a bit sensitive to that because I've just worked on a camera where that spring was broken. I'll unhook the main spring and look at the state of that. That's got quite a bit of tension, that's a good spring. And everything else can start to come apart. 